Welcome to the Fishing Daily Tech Talk Podcast with your host, Oliver McBride. Welcome to the Fishing Daily Tech Talk Podcast. In this episode, I am joined by Tom Ruster, Head of Precision Fishing with Safety and Net Technologies. And we'll be talking about some new kit that is coming for the Catch Cam camera. Welcome, Tom. Uh, good morning. Good to see you, Oliver. Tom, uh, thank you for joining us again. Uh, so, Safety Net Technologies has a new piece of kit for the catch cam. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, uh, it's it's something we've been asked for quite a bit uh, by a number of, of of the fishermen, and it's primarily started about you know how how can I see my doors in action, um, and you know it's 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 not easy to attach something to the door. We actually tried. Put you know putting the camera on the door, but it's, it's very difficult to kind of shoot, bring it back, um, and, and yeah, there's a big chance of actually having a serious accidents uh, against uh, the side of the boat. So we we kind of went back to the drawing board and we came up with this new system that can fit on warps, wires, frames, stanchions, you name it. Um, but it's like a single point where where you've got. Yeah, something that's maybe 10, 20, 30 mil thick and you, you just um, clamp onto it. And basically what it then allows you to do is to have the camera looking at the likes of your trawl door. We can have the light there beside it as well that will light it up. Um, and then you can see how your door is performing, which is a really important part, certainly for, for any of the trawl fishermen. Um, if your doors aren't right, you're burning a lot of fuel and you're probably not fishing right. Um, and yeah, we've got sensors on doors. We can tell about spread, but in terms of like angle of attack um, and your ground contact and where you are, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll see when you bring your door up and it's all shiny on the bottom, but actually it might just be that most of the time the heels in and, 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 and the front ends up a little bit and, you know, that will affect your overall performance. So, Actually, seeing it is, is, is a really useful uh, way of being able to tune your doors. And, and if you talk to the door manufacturers, they'll all kind of say, if you want to optimize it, it's about getting your angle of attack right. So having this visibility will help you get your doors. But it, as I said, it's not just about doors. Um, you know, it could be put on a scallop dredge. Um, we'll be certainly putting on razor dredges as well because there's a, an incredibly difficult place to do any type of filming because of the fluidization but if you can get a little bit back on on the wire you can get a much clearer picture as well so it's got a number of applications um and yet yeah, that's kind of been the the motivation the idea behind it i suppose a, a lot of fishermen will be asking trawler men will be asking uh is, is underwater and, mu and muddy grounds as a visibility good? Can they, can they see what they're doing? It's a good question. And um, it really varies between where you are. Um, so if you want to test pictures, go to Shetland. The water around Shetland is absolutely fantastic. You get great footage. But you can pretty much get great footage everywhere, but you've got to be in the right place at the right time. And one of the biggest challenges with all of this is is the light. Um, and once and you know we're in the first of May now, so the, the growth's really coming into the water. We've got the temperature rising, and you'll see the water color changing. You'll get the blues and the greens and everything else, and that's just the growth in the water. But when you put light in there that absorbs the light so it gets very dark very quickly um and, and as a result then that can be difficult to film but generally speaking yeah it'll it it works reasonably well the clearer the water the better the, the picture um and the best light you'll ever get is sunlight um and you know recently we had a deployment the irc 35 fathom and you'd swear it was kind of you, you know you were maybe 20 foot type uh depth with it it was just so so clear um so yeah it's there, there's a combination and you won't always get to see it clear, you know clearly and the other thing is if you're disturbing the sediment 
and that plume's coming up, that's going to affect. So it's then in that case, you're trying to get the camera in the right place to be not in the middle of that um, and try and orient it to, to get the best shot. So like in terms of the doors, then you want to be in front of the door, looking back down to the door before the plume comes and you get a really clear picture. You do it after the door, not so you can actually just be in the middle of that kind of cloud. And suppose another question is you, you mentioned there um, saving on fuel fuel efficiency for on the on the doors. Uh, what would you be talking about the margins wise? Because you know a lot of fishermen have been fishing the way they have been since they started. Um, catch can can make a make a difference. Uh, what what would they be looking at? Yeah, the doors is one aspect of it, you know, and it's, it's not about fuel uh, as well. You know, there's a lot of pressure now on the industry to reduce the impact of the fishing gear on, on the seabed. And you do that, you save fuel, but you're also kind of addressing some of these environmental concerns. You're probably actually wearing your gear less, so you'll get longer for it. And, and everybody, you know, you... You're not going to argue with any of those things. You want all those things, but you also need to be sure your gear is fishing because if it's not fishing, you're catching nothing. You can be as environmentally friendly as you like. So you want to be as efficient as you can, but you want to be catching and finding that kind of sweet spot. So in terms of the doors, there's a lot of work um, or practice now going in around the kind of semi-pelagic approach um, as uh, in a demersal fishery. Um, and those doors are working and have been proven to work. And the benefit there is somewhere in the region of 10%. And we're looking to put a project together now at the moment with a number of partners to specifically go into looking at this and giving the fishermen the, the information they need to adopt these practices. Because it's pretty widespread in Norway, it's pretty widespread in, 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 in Denmark and, and Holland and what have you. So... It's been proven, but we need to kind of give our fishermen the information and make it more relative to them. You know, is it on a prawn net? Yes, it is. Is he catching prawns? Yes, he is. And what's the fuel savings around that? Well, actually, we'll reduce the drag by 20%, reduce the, the, the fuel by 15% for argument's sake. So, you know, that type of information can be really useful. And then we can also use that to counter the negativity around oh, you're destroying the seabed and everything else. No, we're not. We're out there. We're harvesting natural resource, one of the best food sources, lowest impact food sources, and we're doing it in a responsible way, as responsible as we can. So, you know, it's it's, it's a big picture rather than just focusing on one aspect. But, you know, from a fisherman's point of view, it's about fuel because that's the bottom line straight away, end of the week. Yeah. So, Tom, um, you have a video to accompany this, so we'll have a look at that now. Okay, welcome to the new warp attachment, which will fit to wires, ropes, cables, frames, you name it. So the yellow part, this is the this is where we put your camera or your lamp. Um, and see here, there's actually two wings and two pins, and, and you need to have board open in order to slide it out. So easy to load and easy to remove and you've also got the double insurance of the two safety catches then onto the arm itself you'll notice quite a distance between uh, the hole here which is where you're attached it to and the camera and the reason for that is if it's too close the camera will tend to focus on what's in the frame and if that's your wire or your rope or what have you that will affect the picture and you won't get to see what you want to see Right, so let's say this is a stanchion, you're attaching it to it. So all you do is you kind of fit this in around it, you lock it in place, and then it's just twist. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm just twisting that, tightening it up, uh, doing it by hand, and the whole thing's designed to be done by hand. And, and then once I'm happy with that, it's, it's where it needs to be. Then I'll just snap the cord in on that with the bungee, and that holds it for the vibrations, and that is, everything in place.
where can fishermen go and see this catch cam kit? Is it, uh, are you doing any shows? Yeah, we've got the um, Skipper Expo coming up a um, little over a week's time, and we'll have uh, we'll have the rig there um, at the show. We'll yeah, we'll have it kind of set up. People can can look at it and have a play with it. And certainly, come and talk to us about it and give us some feedback. Um, and yeah, as well as kind of the the warp attachment we'll have all the other attachments uh to hand as well so you can come and see it and we'll have all our videos um you know on on, on tap so to speak so if there's that in particular somebody wants to kind of see or have you put it on a creel or have you you know you done that with a beam troll or whatever then you know we can we can tap into that and we can talk and, and show you know where it's where it's been and what it can do um and certainly um we haven't had any broken ones, which long may that continue. Um, yeah, we're, we're 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 getting it out in some really interesting places and, and and learning a hell of a lot. And what we're finding, which is great, is is the more people push, the more they learn. Um, you get some folk and they're a little bit afraid to try things out. And you know, you never learn. You've got to push it, and and that's when you learn. So yeah, we'll be more than happy to anybody wants to come by the stand, have a chat. Check out the kit, um, and if you want to buy one, we'll certainly do all we can to 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 sell you one and, and kind of get you set up as well. Yeah, and suppose a question is the feedback you're getting from the people who's already already using it. You know, it's it's not just a once-off resolution. This is something that you can keep using over and over again to keep improve modifying and improving your fishing technique, isn't it? Uh, absolutely and uh, you know it's, it's the condition <clears throat> excuse me the conditions and the environment and, and i suppose the world of fishing is is it's changing it's changing very fast and um you know we as, as a fisherman you've got to adapt very quickly to it um so you know the catch cam gives you a head start there for sure um kind of it's somewhat frustrating for us guys that are using it it's a fisherman's way. You don't want telling everybody when you've got so you know good. You're on good fishing. You want to keep that quiet because you've got a slight advantage. And and, and the guys are using it. It could be hard to kind of get them to stand up in the box and shout about it. Uh, to be fair, but yeah, the ones that are using it, kind of. If we say they're doing like five day trips out on a Sunday night, land on a Friday for argument's sake. You know, they're pulling that out a couple of times a week. They want to check things out, maybe looking at a bit of new ground, there's something not right with the gear, what have you, or the fish behavior side of things as well. You know, it's just kind of learning and, and, and understanding things better. And every time you put it in, you are learning something new. Well, and my experience uh, with fishermen is that when things are going good, they usually stay quiet. And yes. it's the fellows that's staying quiet, that's doing well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Tom, <laughs> so, Tom, suppose there's a whole variety of questions people will, will probably be asking you, like about uh, quad system, net systems, uh, everything else, how it works. And you'll be there yourself at the Skipper Expo to answer these questions. Yeah, I'll be there. There'll be a good few of us from the, from the team there. Um, we'll be on hand. We'll have all the kit uh, available. We'll have the videos, um, and yeah, we'll we'll certainly be open to any kind of conversations on on the couple of days. Um, and you know, it's it's an enjoyable day. It's 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 a nice day out. You learn. We're learning from it, and that's why we want guys to come by because you know, there's plenty of ideas out there. And if you can plant the seed, and those can grow, you can get even kind of better stuff come off the back of it. So it's an important date in the calendar for us, you know, as a company, just kind of don't get many opportunities really to speak to that many fishermen um, over a short period of time and, and get that kind of feedback. Because, you know, when, you co when the fishermen come into the show, they're there and they've got their show head on. If you're trying to speak to them in the harbour or on the pier, there's something else that they're worried about and uh, you're kind of annoying me here, but... 
they've got the time a bit more time for you and they're in the right frame of mind so yeah for us it's really really important it's, it's an enjoyable couple of days as well and a bit of crack along the way i'm sure right tom well thank you for joining us and we wish you a successful show at the expo and we'll be talking to you again thanks very much oliver yeah we'll look forward to seeing you soon